Hey everyone, welcome to the first lesson of Empowerment 2. Empowerment 2 is titled Trinfinity Cosmology and Empowering Evolution. So in this course, I will share with you guys some of the backstory of creation, some of the background, some of the context, some of the meta perspectives, the more metaphysical side of empowerment, which may or may not resonate as much for all of you, but it will be helpful to at least have that frame of reference to know where I'm coming from when I'm speaking the way I do in these lessons, so that you have that background at least intellectually understood to some extent. For some of you, it might be really exciting to really, really start to understand and experience those different densities, for example. And so Trinfinity Cosmology, so you have an understanding of it, and empowering evolution. So you are becoming, through your greater understanding, through waking up, you are literally becoming a more efficient co-creator, a more efficient empowerer of evolution. In other words, you are accelerating the evolution of the one infinite creator in its form, in its creation, in its evolution. So by waking up, you're empowering it, you're doubling, tripling, quadrupling the effects, you're accelerating the process, so to speak. Not that the one is in a rush, but still it's nice to become more efficient, to become more empowered and to accelerate that journey on behalf of all that there is. So thank you for your service. And this lesson is titled Seven Universal Densities of Love Light. So as you've heard me speak in Empowerment One course, I sort of explained how love light came about, the order of creation. So once free agency started to generate love and light, that love light then became the substance of all that is manifest, of all that is, of all that is created, of all that has form. So everything we see all the way down to a physical brick, for example, or a piece of wood or your physical bodies or the walls of this room, you will, um, they exist, they consist of vibrations of love light, different frequencies of love light, different patterns of love light energy. So literally everything is created out of love light. And this love light from its pure form to, um, to very efficiently have consciousness develop through evolutionary stages, it generated seven different densities. Now you can see this um, when you, for example, prismatically separate white light, you will see the seven colors. This is the same for all vibration in general, for that meta perspective vibration in general, for that non-physical love light energy, which in a sense prismatically has separated itself into seven main uh, densities or categories, if you will. So I avoid using the word dimension because it's a diluted word. It can mean all kinds of things. There can be many different dimensions within different densities, etc. The word density is more reliable. It's more consistent. It, there's only seven of them, so to speak. There is more, there's infinite and there's sub densities, but basically there's seven densities per creation, per octave, per per um, universe. And so I will go through these. And again, this may or may not resonate for you because for many people, this is very far from their bed kind of material. It's not, it's not very close to home. It's not very something many people think about or understand or contemplate when they're just living their everyday physical lives. But it can help to generate a bigger perspective and put things in context, things that happen to you here, the challenges that you're facing, the things that you're feeling and experiencing and intuiting and, and the unique inclinations or challenges that you came into this life with. This can all be put into greater context if we understand a little bit about those densities. So love light, in a sense, generates the first density for consciousness to then latch onto and generate an experience out of. So what I mean by that is that the love light then generates a substance that we could call first density material, such as the elements, um, such as earth, such as rock, such as wood, such as water, such as air, etc. So the elemental energies are basically what you could call first, den first density materials. Now these first density materials, as with any density material, needs a consciousness to give life to that, to animate that, to latch onto that, to incarnate with that, so to speak, 
just as these third density bodies that we, so to speak, inhabit. It's our consciousness that is, in a sense, always beyond and transcendent to all densities. Ultimately, not relationally, but ultimately, it is the container for all densities because it is the free agent of awareness itself before love light even came into existence. So ultimately, your consciousness is transcendent to all densities. However, the experience that you'll have of yourself will be located um, primarily and will be based primarily and will have the feel and the taste and the flavor primarily of a consciousness that is, in a sense, in relationship with one of the densities. So again, the first density material is what we would call the elements, for example. Very basic, uh, static material. Many people call them inanimate inanimate objects or inanimate materials, but they're not really. So these first density materials also are conducive to consciousness learning certain lessons, just as your third density body material is conducive for your consciousness to take hold of, to take control of this body, so to speak, and learn certain lessons in relationship to that. Now, obviously, you'll learn very different kinds of lessons if you are attached to rockness or woodness or waterness as opposed to being a seemingly uh, separate independent individual in a body that can move around and speak and communicate and think so the lessons of each density and this is my main message that i want to bring across with these seven densities is that each density has different types of lessons different learnings that it is most conducive to offering to that consciousness that chooses to latch on to that particular density material. So first density, we could call the density of beingness or awareness. But it is not so much awareness as we would speak of in terms of an enlightened being, being aware of itself. It is awareness in its primordial state of not really being self-reflective yet. So consciousness in its first stage of development, of waking up and learning and expressing, through those seven evolutionary densities or stages, will start out with exploring itself as beingness, as what we again see as inanimate or unmovable objects, objects that don't grow, they don't move, they are static. They offer a similar consistent experience for millions of years. Now, in this density, the point is, so to speak, for that consciousness to start to generate a desire, to start to generate a wakefulness in the direction of growth, which is the second density. Now we see, for example, trees, plants, and, um, and um, minerals, for example. Um, basically, basically anything that has the ability to move and be more organic, what we would call organic matter, is most often second density material that has a second density consciousness tied to it or in relationship with it to then use that as a mirror to explore itself in that density of learning. So the lesson of first density is simply beingness and through millions of years of beingness of water slashing onto the rocks and onto the sand of the beaches and wind blowing over and eroding and etc. All these elements working together to wake up to a more organic state of desiring growth, desiring movement and desiring greater independence from the collective state of that density material. If this still makes sense. If not, that's fine too. Just get a sense of it. So now that this material offers that experience closer to self-awareness, it wants to generate growth. This consciousness now wants to start to move. And in a sense, the very beginnings of thinking for oneself start to arise. Not really yet, it's still instinctual at this point. Nevertheless, it becomes more independent in its desire for its self-exploration. So then in its next cycle or density, it will start to explore what it's like to be organic, to have organic matter or material attached to its consciousness, so to speak. In other words, for example, animals or plants or organic life forms like that other than humanoids, um, offer the experience of growth. They offer the experience of moving upward, in a sense, and starting to interact and starting to engage and starting to build relationship of some sort. So that is second density learning, is that of growth towards independence, towards the light of the Creator, and towards relationship. In the later stages of second density, we'll see, for example, 
animal life forms and let's say a pack of wolves, for example, pack behavior, um, where relationship starts to become important. But now relationship is all still very instinctual. It is all very much intertwined with the collective. They still very much have a shared identity as a group, as a pack. This is just one example of how this growth happens. So that happens in the later stages of second density. Now, when a pack of wolves, for example, starts to interact with each other and there is the alpha male and um, there's hierarchy starting to develop, but it's still a singular consciousness in a way. It's still a shared identity. And through that conflict and friction and relationship that happens on a day-to-day -day basis, the consciousness will start to more and more wake up to the fact that it is through the form of, uh, of an organic body, such as a wolf body, it will start to generate more and more the awareness that it is a being apart from other beings, that it is a individual in relationship to other individuals. Now, when a consciousness through second density learnings reaches this level and pets do this very quickly as well, that's why they come to us human beings as pets. It's because they're always in the presence of a third density being and they've they're given names and they're given identities and they're so cute and we love them and we adore them and we overload them with love and affection and identity. So we paste identity onto an entity that is still used to having a shared collective group, but we take them away from their pack, so to speak, and make them independent in a household and we start giving them names. So in the example of the pack of wolves and through conflict and hierarchy and relationship, or in the example of the pet, this consciousness now starts to wake up to the fact that, hey, I am. It starts to generate enough of a vibration of self-awareness for it to be conducive to move on to the next stage of learning or the next cycle or the next density. In this case, third density, which again, second density is that of growth and or organic um, movement, so to speak moving upwards towards the light, towards independence. Third density is the density of self-consciousness or self-awareness, where there is an awareness of self in relationship to the rest. Now this creates a certain kind of separation, which is very conducive, the separation of me and the world, which is very conducive to learning a lot of things that you cannot learn if you have a shared sense of identity. So third density is very brief, in relationship to or in comparison to the other densities and it's very specific and it's very intense and it's sort of like going through the eye of the needle it's or going through the the funnel of the vortex so to speak being sucked down the drain it's like an intense transformational period of time it's a tr it's an intense churning it's an intense process of waking up it's fast it's brief it's challenging it's intense so the consciousness is thrown into an awareness and into a body that has the ability to think for itself and it starts to generate more and more an understanding that it is, I am, in relationship to other things and other beings. So now relationship starts to revolve around me versus you, in a sense. And this is where the choice is made. This is where the choice in the evolutionary cycle of the consciousness is made. Whether or not this consciousness wants to devote itself to service to others, mostly, predominantly, or service to self. Whether it is a service to others-oriented being, or it wants to explore the universe as a service to self creature, where what we could perceive of as very selfish in nature, very much about domination and enslavement and my will against everything else or above everything else, or whether that creature wants to develop itself in the direction of service and sharing and joy and love and generosity and kindness and um, being of service to other versions of itself, to the rest of itself. Either way, both are allowed, both are totally allowed by the one infinite. And the choice is up to the individual. And this is where the choice is made in third density lessons in learning. And so when we reach the later stages of third density, as we have in the last couple thousand years um, or more on our planet, in our civilization, you will see that things start to change to where the lessons of fourth density start to be infused into third density. They become more important. Fourth density is the density of love and understanding and compassion. And again, losing one's separation points of view for the sake of a greater sense of inseparability with the whole. 
And so this is what you can see very acutely, but more on that in the next lesson, in our civilization today. Now this consciousness then wants to learn the lessons of love, whether that is complete 100% devotion to loving only oneself above everything else, or as is the case for most beings, and most beings especially on our planet today, and that of service to others, where we want to express and learn about love um, in relationship to others, and we want to feel the inseparability in that way. We want to feel connected to other beings in that way. So, fourth density is that of love and service, and um, either to self or others, and compassion or understanding. Now, when a fourth density being it reaches a point of exhaustion because it's in some cases too too much oriented, especially we're talking about the service to others oriented fourth density beings, sometimes they get too overwhelmed with love in a way. And you may know this from your own experience even, where you want to share too much, where you care too much about someone's well-being, and it becomes detrimental to either your own or even their well-being. Um, that's just one example, but you can find many examples of people that are too loving almost, you would say. But it's not that they're too loving, it's that their love is not balanced yet by wisdom. Fifth density is the density where we teach ourselves the lessons of wisdom, of independence, where we really, in a sense, become kind of yogic, where we realize that everything exists inside of our consciousness. There is no external world. There are no, not truly at least, there's no other people, there's no other beings, it's all one being. Everything is already perfect and complete. Nothing can ever go wrong. Everything that ever wants to be attained can be attained by simply sitting and being there or meditating on it or intending it. So everything now becomes contained in the individual. This is the density of light or wisdom. Now the imbalance in this is that it's too withdrawn. It is too much internalized in a way. And so in sixth density, which is the density of unity, of union, the union between love and light, the being returns to opening itself up to as if there are or would be other beings, even though it knows everything is contained within itself, it still allows for the illusion of service to others. It still allows for the illusion of sharing. It still allows for the illusion of understanding and compassion and kindness if something seemingly goes wrong and there seemingly is misery. Where the fifth density being might be more inclined to be, pfft, it's all perfect. A sixth density being is more inclined to know that it's all perfect, but simultaneously extend a hand as if there is an external reality. Now this is the density where the really subtle lessons of balancing love and wisdom start to come up for the consciousness, for the individual that is tied to that density. And it becomes really quite hard to explain in terms that we would understand what this density is like, but just imagine light. Imagine pure light, beings made of pure light, group consciousness is made of pure light, being of service and extending themselves throughout the lower densities. This is also the density where your, as I would term that higher self or overarching self or soul resides. And therefore it's already here, even if you are a third or fourth density explore, um, explorative being. So this is this overarching umbrella non-physical self that we could call the soul or the higher self is residing at a sixth density level vibration of love and light. More on that later as well in this course. Now, seventh density is that where the consciousness in sixth density has, in a sense, left all that it knows to creation, to all of its portions, to all of its parts in the form of the higher self. It has now made all of its knowledge that it has experienced through all of those millions of years of evolution available to all of its parts that are still back in time or on a lower density exploring evolution. So that higher self is now available to all of its parts. And in a sense for the individual itself, which leaves the blueprint of the higher self available to everyone else. The being itself that generated that whole experience, that whole journey of evolution has reached a certain completion. The completion of having balanced love and wisdom and having been making oneself completely available to all of creation. But now simultaneously this beingness starts to feel a pull, a draw back into the creator itself. In a sense, its journey within creation as we know it, within form as we know it, has completed itself. And now this being 
will start to gradually, gradually turn its gaze, in a sense, backwards into the one infinite mystery. And so it feels a very strong gravitational pull in late six density to move into becoming all that there is. So it starts to, in a sense, lose its individual identity, even if it has already merged in fourth and fifth and sixth density with a group entity, with a group consciousness of many, many beings collectively sharing one mind while still being individual. Even that is still an identity. It's a group identity. Now in seven density, even that identity is transcended. And the gaze is turned towards the one infinite creator, towards source itself towards the unspeakable, the indescribable, the infinite, the undefinable, the truly formless, that which is beyond everything and all that there is. And now this being feels such a strong pull towards that, that it in a sense enters the inner black hole of its consciousness and starts to merge with the one infinite. This is seven density and this is one big mystery and there's not much we can say about this, but my infinity teachings, the infinity course taps into that. It taps into how to get glimpses of your seven density level of being already. And then after a timeless amount of time in timelessness, where merger has occurred in a sense, the beingness returns or reoccurs in a sense, even though it has never lost itself reemerges into the first density of another universe, a new universe where things work differently, where everything that has been learned collectively from that former universe is now becoming a new universe, a new creation, a new way of expressing the one infinite creator. And this goes on infinitely, 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 infinitely. So, those are the seven densities in a nutshell. Uh, we will attach a video to this lesson, the seven densities of evolution. Um, it's on YouTube as well, where I share more about this in more detail. Although this video did capture a lot of it and the basics, the basics of it, the most important aspects of it. If you want more sort of knowledge on it, you can watch that video as well. There's no homework for this lesson, just enjoy, maybe listen to this lesson once again, let it sink in, maybe meditate on it if that feels good, and continue to relax as the awareness that you are, and continue to empower yourself to generate more of creation in more amazing aligned ways that inspire you. And I'll see you in the next lesson.